continuing on our discussion. So, theorem on limits, number one, by limits of C, where C is any constant. As X approaches to A, A, A can be any real number, is equals to that same constant. So, if we're going to analyze this theorem, number one, kasi ang itatanong nyo naman eh, kung si X ay papunta kahit, sa kahit na anong real number or number, Si X ba may kinalaman kay C? Okay, so definitely wala. Kung walang kinalaman kay C, si X, of course, limits of a constant is still equals to that constant. Okay, tatandahan yun. Number two, limits of a variable X where X approaches to A. So kung si X ang hinahanapan ng limits at siya ay papunta kay A, of course, the value of the limits of that variable x is also equals to a, kung saan siya papunta. May madaling intindihan, no? Okay, number three. If I have limits of a product of a constant and a function, so again, function is an equation. Okay, ano ibig sabihin? Si constant c, dahil no effect siya, pwede nang ilabas sa, sa limits. So, hindi makaka to si constant. And what are you going? What the thing that you're going to do is to evaluate the limits of the function where x approaches to a. Ibig sabihin, kailangan matanggal natin yung limits, kaya we need to evaluate where x approaches to a in that function. Yung parang kanina explanation yung papunta kay two. Okay, in the sum and difference of two functions, no, f of x and g of x, applying the limits, so pwedeng paghiwalayin. Apply mo muna, evaluate mo muna si limits ni function of x plus or minus yung limits naman o yung value ni limits ni g of x. So, pwedeng paghiwalayin. It can be added or subtracted. Okay, number 5. In multiplication, if I'm going to multiply the product of f of x and g of x, so pwede rin paghiwalayin. Okay, apply mo muna yung limit sa f of x, the first function, which is limits of f of x, times limits naman ng g of, of x. Parang dinistribute lang natin si limit sa bawat function. Same thing in division. Now, isa lang yung limits, and we have two function or quotient of two function. So, pwedeng paghiwalay. Apply the limits on the numerator, where there is a function of f of x, and the denominator limits of g of x. Okay, so parang pinaghihiwalay-hiwalay lang natin. Now, if we're going to evaluate limits of a radical, yung limits na sa labas, yung function na nakaradical, parang pwedeng ipasok nyo rin si limit sa loob ng radical. Pagka-evaluate nyo, saka nyo kunin yung root, kung siya ay square root, cube root, and so on and so forth. Okay, so ito, this is just provision, kasi nga naman, where n is a positive integer, this is the root or index or order, kailangan daw si f of x is positive, greater than 0. Kasi pag nag-negative yung radical, to yung value sa loob ni radical symbol, doon lumalabas yung imaginary number. Okay, hindi ko na-discuss sa inyo yung imaginary number, no? But yung uh, number kasi hati sa dalawa, uh, real and imaginary number. Yung real, yun yung mga ginagawa natin. Yung imaginary number, yun yung may number na may kasamang small letter i or small letter j. Na ginagamit yung imaginary number sa pagkuha ng mga complex na uh, pag-solve ng mga complex problem. Uh, yung mga, for example, sa kuryente, sa signal, etc., etc. Okay, now, if I have limits of an exponent or power, so, ang radical is the same as power din, no? Paano nalalaman ang radical ay perehas na power? Yung kung ang power ay fraction, yun, ibig sabihin radical yon. And exponent na fraction, siya ay radical. So, in this case, theorem number 8 on limits, 
Pag nasa labas si limits, pwede rin ipasok sa loob, evaluate nyo muna yung limits, tapos saka i-apply yung exponent. So, yun lang yung pinaka-process niya. So, huwag kakalimutan yung walong limits. Okay, so now, if we're going to do or solve it, apply the theorem on the example. So, ito yung example ngayon natin. Okay, example number one. Evaluate limits of the function of x squared plus 3x plus 4. So again, take note, hindi basta-basta yun yung direct substitution yan, ha? So if I'm going to apply limits of the function, tingnan nyo muna as a whole. So as a whole, ano siya? Addition. According doon sa theorem ng addition ng limits, pwedeng paghiwalay-hiwalayin, di ba? So we can write it as limits, sorry, ito tayo sa solution. May solution na pala, ano? So, we have limits, I distribute ko, kay x squared, where x approaches to 2, plus limits of 3x, where x approaches to 2, plus limits of 4, where x approaches to 2. Okay, so that's the first process. Pwede daw paghiwalay-hiwalayin. Okay, now, on the second process, evaluate ngayon natin first term, second, and term. So, from left to right. Kasi ganun yung process na gagawin din natin sa differential calculus. Una, as a whole, tingnan mo kung ano yung process. Second, pagkatapos na, from left to right. From left to right, laging ganun, or straight forward. Okay, so if I'm going to apply limits of x squared, so ito yung lalabas na function. Okay, meron ba tayong ganyang inaral doon sa theorem na yun? Now, limits of x squared where x approaches to 2. So, para siyang x times x actually yung x squared, eh, di ba? So, multiplication. It means, pwede kong paghiwalayin din. So, I can write limits of x times limits of x and both x approaches to 2. Plus, yung limits of a product ng constant and a variable nga, may tulad na tayo yan. Pwede daw ilabas si constant, no effect, tapos kunin yung limits ng variable, x, which is approaches to 2. Okay. Plus, the last term, limits of a constant. Wala naman siyang kasamang variable. Kaya walang kinalaman si 4 kay x kahit saan pa siya papunta. Kaya will remain the constant 4. So, yung last term, natanggal na yung limits. So, we need to evaluate the three more functions. Yung first term and the second term. Kailangan matanggal yung limits. So, number 4, sorry, uh, process 3. So, we have now limits of x. Okay, meron na tayong tulang na yan. Saan daw papunta si x? Kay 2. Okay, same thing with the second function. 2 then Plus, 3 limits of x where x approaches to 2. So, may 3 na ako sa labas. Times 2. Plus 4. So, nawala na yung limits. We can now apply yung simple operation na lang. So, 2 times 2 is 4 plus 6, plus 4. So, the answer is 14. Okay, so, yan yung sagot doon sa problem na to. So, we can solve more problems. So, or, we go, we're going to solve problem number 2.